a journey to where nature is at her most magnificent and forbidding. To mysterious places where dazzling and diverse cultures flourish. Where China's numerous ethnic groups draw you into a world of color and vibrancy. Where distinct lifestyles, traditions and crafts have survived the test of time. Join Travelogue on its 17-part Ethnic Odyssey, visiting more than 100 places across China. Ethnic Odyssey, an enlightened look at China's rich ethnic heritage. In this episode of Travelogue, come to Yushu for a closer look at the Tibetans of Qinghai and their horse racing festival. You gotta see it to believe it. Variety of its landscape and diversity of its peoples. Welcome to Travelog's Ethnic Minority Special again. And if you look at the site behind me, you see these multicolored rainbow. They're like prayer flags that are dancing in the wind. And in my opinion, this is the most spectacular sight you could find anywhere. If you're familiar with this, you'll know that we are in one of the centers of Tibetan culture. That's Yushu in Qinghai province. And it is here that we will experience the nomadic lifestyle of the Tibetans. We'll see them rushing through the plateau on their horses, charging at the emptiness. And also, we'll hear their beautiful songs and dance. Welcome to Travelogue, I'm Yin. And get ready for an unforgettable experience. Qinghai province is a land of marvel and mystery. In its remotest areas, you can find some of the most culturally rich regions where Tibetans live. Our journey starts in the provincial capital Xining, from where we'll head to Yushu to celebrate the famed horse racing festival. The Qinghai Tibet Plateau is home to communities of nomadic Tibetans, with their long history, rich culture, and religious devotion. Despite living in a harsh, high-altitude environment, Tibetans are famous for their sprightly nature and vivacious culture. The spirit of the Kangba Tibetans permeates their energetic songs, bold dances, strikingly bright faces, and wild horse races. The most typical image of these people is that of men and women dressed in bold colors racing across the grassland on horseback. The road from Xining to Yushu is 800 kilometers long, taking us past the famous Qinghai Lake, which Qinghai Province is named after. It's the largest saltwater lake in China, whose scenery is so beautiful that people believe it's blessed by heaven. It's the right season, you can get a glimpse of endless rows of race flowers. Qinghai Lake is known variously as the Green Lake, Blue Sea, and fairyland, names that describe its changing shades at different times of day, in different seasons, and when viewed from different angles. The locals call the lake their mother lake, and they hold ceremonies here to make sacrifices to the lake god. Before the arrival of Tibetan Buddhism, the indigenous religion was Ban and involved the worship of mountains, forests, and bodies of water. The sacrificial ceremonies around Qinghai Lake are a lingering legacy of Ban. The path to Yushu leads further on to Tibet. The history of the road is intertwined with the story of the beautiful Tang Dynasty princess. Princess Wencheng, who traveled along this route to marry the Tibetan king Song Zangganbo. Here, the natural environment provides a habitat for some rare animals. In particular, is the rare Tibetan antelope. Though rarely seen, it's a symbol of the wildlife of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, with its strength of body, grace, and free spirit. Busted a, a tire here. I think we crossed over a rock over there and, and we sort of slid over the rock. 师傅没事吧这个? 没事。Uh, 
All we have to do is now a quick little change up. We got an extra spare in the back and uh, soon we'll be out of this emptiness to somewhere. A journey like ours is hard work. While the high altitude makes us dizzy and short of breath, the tough roads take their toll on our vehicle. But the journey continues. On this unending grassland, the sides of the road are dotted with lakes, big and small. Yushu is sometimes called the source of rivers, namely the Yellow River, the Yangtze River, and the Lanzhang. Now since ancient times, the Yellow River has nurtured Chinese civilization. The source of the river is 4,600 meters above sea level, and there are plenty of natural barriers. Even so, you may be surprised by what you find here. See that blue behind me, that lake back there? It's called Lake Eling, and it's particularly significant because it's... Well, I'll have to show you in a picture, see? Like, if this were Lake Eling, Eling, See, the waters of the Yellow River flow into it, and then they unify here, and they flow out as one river. It's called the Yellow River. And the Yellow River is also known as the mother river of Chinese civilization. You can see it running along over there. The source of the Yellow River is surprisingly peaceful and clear. Later, its waters are notably wild and turbulent, but their origin could not be clearer or calmer. The Yellow River is the second longest river in China. From Qinghai, it passes through nine provinces and autonomous regions on its way to the Bohai Sea on the east coast. It gets its color from the yellow clay dust that is blown across China. It's a sediment that permeates China's long history. Princess Wencheng, having set out for Tibet from Chang'an, the Tang Dynasty capital, was met by her husband, the Tibetan king, at the source of the Yellow River. And next to me now is the Yellow River itself, the origin. I never expected it to be so clear and so blue. As a symbol of respect and honor towards the Yellow River, the Tibetans often place one of these nearby. I'll do the same. The Yellow River is the spiritual home of the Chinese people, and its source is protected by typical Tibetan yak horns. As we continue further, near the path are some of the prayer wheels that line the mountains. These multicolored flags have Buddhist blessings written on them designed to spread well-being to the surrounding area. Each time the wind blows, it's said it's like the reading of the scriptures. Tibetans place these flags here to commemorate Princess Wencheng. On her journey to Tibet, she brought volumes of Buddhist sutras with her. She also brought the finest farming and industrial techniques from the Tang Dynasty. Having settled in, she taught the Tibetan people how to grow crops and vegetables, grind wheat, and make wine. In this way, she was instrumental in improving the lives of many Tibetans. Later on, when another Tang Dynasty princess, Jin Cheng, passed by on her way to marry another Tibetan king, she ordered her craftsmen to build a temple in honor of Princess Wencheng. 
people in Tibet are grateful for what Princess Wencheng did for them. Still today, people come here to pray and ask for blessing. In their hearts, Princess Wencheng is like a flame that burns, quiet but strong. Yushu has its own place of mystery, Leba Valley. Here, carved on the mountains and rocks, is the six-word mantra of Tibetan Buddhism, O Mani Be Me Hom, it reads. The entire teachings of the Buddha are contained in this mantra. Not surprisingly, it can't be translated into a simple phrase. Repeating this mantra is believed to bring merit and ease the negative karma. Meditating upon it is believed to purify the mind and body. Tibetan Buddhism is associated with one of the world's most distinctive spiritual cultures. It's based on profound wisdom, and to these Tibetans, there's nothing more important than spiritual fulfillment and collecting good karma for the next life. So we finally arrived at Jiegu, capital of Yushu Prefecture. A must-see here is the Jiegu Monastery, located on top of a hill to the north. The monastery is famous for its magnificent structure, the number of its celebrated monks, and its rich collection of relics. Much of the monastery's fame is also attributed to its first living Buddha. Inside, the monastery comes alive with golden statues adorned with white scarves by respectful worshippers and colorful paintings of Tibetan deities. If you ask people to choose one location as the unifying point for everyone in the town, it would probably be this temple back there. You see, it's located high above the mountains, and it overlooks the entire town and protects every single person here, blessing them. Yushu is one of the most remote areas where Tibetans live. The population is over 90% Tibetan. Devout worshippers will come inside the monastery.